Life Audio. Every time I go in country, I ask the Holy Spirit to just reveal what it is he wants me to see about him. And he did not disappoint. And in fact, um, after not being in country for almost three years, it was such a blessing to me to be able to participate in that aspect of God's nature and character in that way. I look forward to sharing it with you today. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today I want to share a little bit about some things that the Lord revealed to me as I was serving in the Dominican Republic last week. You know, I always kind of go in to any missional opportunity with something prepared on my heart to share because there's always opportunities to share, whether it is on a public platform in a church or prayer meeting kind of setting, or if it's just within the context of one-on-one conversations. Uh, In my experience, when I have had something prepared, God always gives me the opportunity to share it. And so I always encourage our teams, our participants on our teams to do that as well. Share a testimony, either your salvation testimony or a testimony of what God has been doing in your life or something he's been teaching you or something that he's revealed to you from his word. And so I had a message prepared and uh, of course it never fails, like day two or three, um, one of the staff members asked, Hey, can you speak during prayer meeting this week? And I of course said, sure, I would love to. It's a, it would be a blessing and an honor to do that. And so as I was praying before the start of that meeting earlier that morning, the Holy spirit started to kind of change things, um, kind of changed my train of thought as far as what I thought it was going to be sharing. And what he led me to share felt, um, like perhaps it was not, it was just confusing to me. Um, a couple of weeks ago, if you've listened, if you've not listened, you can go back and listen to it during the series. We talked about biblical meditation and meditating on God's word. One of the things we did was this meditative process of reading scripture through our senses. And so we did the story of the little boy who Jesus used his lunch to feed the 5,000. And so if you're not familiar um, with, with that technique that I did is we just kind of walked through the story thinking about what it would have felt like to be there that day for Jesus to use what you had and perhaps how the grass felt underneath you as you sat on the ground and maybe the sound of the birds or, or the waves crashing in the distance. And at the end of that story, picturing what it would have been like after Jesus left and you're all alone and you're kind of sitting there um, just contemplating the events of the day and Jesus comes back. And when Jesus comes back, he says to you, what can I do for you? And in that space is an opportunity to pour out the things that are overwhelming to you or that are burdening your heart or that you are confused about and share them with Jesus. And if there isn't anything, that's okay, because being in the presence of Jesus is a holy place. And that's where we get filled back up from, especially if we're doing ministry um, or we're serving him. That that place is, is becomes a place of overflow in that relationship with Jesus. And then from that place of overflow, we can then turn to Jesus and say, well, what can I do for you? Because then serving becomes an outpouring and an overflow of our hearts, not a burden. But we have to get to this place where we fill back up. So 
Anyway, in that meditative process, I read that whole chapter from John chapter 6, and we kind of walked through that that exercise. And that's what I felt the Lord was sensing. That's what I sensed the Lord was telling me to do. And I was confused because it didn't feel like perhaps it would translate because I don't speak Spanish and we have translators, but that doesn't always 100% get the concepts across. And I just didn't know if it would sit well with with the staff that day. Um, But I have learned that even if I'm confused and things don't make sense, um, to be obedient to God's calling on my life. And so we go into the staff meeting, um, the prayer meeting, and I'm praying, okay, Lord, I'm going to be obedient even if this feels awkward and it it falls flat. I'm, I'm just surrendering this time to you. And as we're going through our morning and we start worshiping, the song that they worshiped to was Open the Eyes of My Heart. Lord, we want to see you. And of course, they were singing in Spanish, but we knew the words in English. And what a beautiful thing that is, if you've never experienced it, to be openly worshiping with somebody that doesn't speak the same language with you, but your spirits are speaking the same language to God. And through the Holy Spirit, um, God speaks all languages. People say to me all the time, do you speak Spanish? And I say, no, but the Holy Spirit does. And that's good enough for me. And and for me, I work in so many countries that it's it would be really difficult for me to to learn all the languages. But regardless, as we're singing this, open the eyes of my heart. We want to see you. The Holy Spirit started to reveal to me, okay, that's why we're doing what we're doing, because I want them to see me. And this meditative practice that you're going to walk them through is going to help them with that. And so I, in obedience, got up, of course, and I shared. And I will say, and this is not to like boast at all, but it it made a, it made an impact. It was, in fact, the very thing not just that God was calling me to share, but that he wanted them to hear. Because these are our implementing staff that are in country, that are doing the hard work, that are serving day in, day out, in the middle of some really difficult circumstances. And I don't know if you've ever been on a mission trip, or if you've been to a place where, um, like a third world country, where it's incredibly hard um, circumstances with, you know, sometimes no electricity or no running water or all of those kinds of things, but it's, it's difficult. And the enemy has had his grasp on a lot of those communities for generations. So there's spiritual difficulty and physical difficulty and of course, pandemic difficulty. And so, um, that message was exactly what they needed to hear and what God wanted them to hear. And so I was so thankful that despite my confusion, I trusted the Holy Spirit, I trusted God to to be obedient and was able to be used by God in that moment. And so as we continued on throughout the week, of course, that was a really blessed moment and I was able to just spend time in prayer with with our staff. Um, Later on in the week, what I actually did is I, I asked some of our participants that were there um we we had a team that went with us um that were not staff they were just participants in 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 the trip i asked several of them to just share maybe 5 minutes of a, some devotional content and one of the pastors uh, i think it was the next day or the day after he shares a message and a scripture that was completely in line with what I had shared. And I'm going to read it. It's actually from John chapter five, verses one through six. It says, after these things, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, there is a pool, which in Hebrew is called Bethesda, having five porticos. Now that's interesting. I want to stop here for a minute. The place that we were in was called Casa Bethesda. Um, That's the name of our mission house in the Dominican Republic. And um, I just thought that was interesting. I don't even know if he realized that. So in verse three, in these porticos lay a multitude, pay attention to that word, multitude. There was a multitude of those who were sick, who were blind, who were limping or paralyzed. Now a man was there who had been ill for 38 years. Jesus, upon seeing this man lying there and knowing he had already been in that condition for a long time, said to him, do you want to get well? And so what that pastor shared that day is what I'm going to share with you is Jesus in this place where there was a multitude of people. We're going to take a quick break right here. And when we come back, we're going to continue talking about how Jesus sees you in the multitude and he wants you to see him too.
Stay tuned. He saw this man. This man that needed him in his brokenness. And I think sometimes we forget that even though there's a multitude, Jesus sees you in the multitude. He sees your brokenness. He sees your need for him. And he says to you, do you want to get well? I love that for so many reasons. Because earlier in the week, Jesus was talking about, do you see me? And then by the end of the week, he was talking about, I see you. And so for me, um, this trip was healing. Um, My last, not my very last trip, but one of my last trips um, prior to the pandemic was incredibly heartbreaking for me because it was um, the you can listen to previous episodes for the details on this, but we had had a failed adoption in um, an African country and I was just too heartbroken to go back to Africa. And so in a lot of ways, this trip was healing for me because it reminded me of the mission and the calling that God has on my life. And not that I am not incredibly blessed to, to um, work from home and work on mission, which are the nations the rest of the year. Um, you know, I work remotely and that's an incredible blessing for our family, but the reason why I do the things that I do on the computer, behind my desk, creating resources, all those things is because of the impact it makes in country. And in some ways, I feel like the Lord gave me an aspect of my heart back. It was incredibly healing. And so my encouragement for you is if you were thinking about going on a mission trip, I 1000% would recommend it. Um, and Children of the Nations has trips. Um, if you're interested in a trip, I'm thinking about hosting a Hearing Jesus trip for our listeners. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. Um, but with whatever organization, your church or another missions organization, if you've not gone, I would encourage you to go because there are certain aspects in my life, this has been true. There are certain aspects of how God operates in our lives that are more prevalent on the mission field or we only see on the mission field. And it has been life-changing for me and it continues to change my life every time that I go. And so uh, this trip, um, this was the, the thing that God left me with. And I pray that that blesses you today. Friend, I want you to know, I say this all the time, you are seen in the multitude, you are seen. God sees you. He sees your hurt. He sees your brokenness. And he comes down to where you are to meet that need. But you have to let him. Lord God, I pray for my friends today that are listening. Lord God, help them to remember that they are seen. Not only are they seen, but help them to see you as you reveal yourself to them. Lord God, I thank you for the way that you pursue us, even when we don't even know we want to be pursued. I pray for um, my friends that they would start to understand how involved you want to be in their lives, in their daily lives, in their day-to-day, not just on the mission field, but in their day-to-day lives as they are washing dishes and cooking meals and going to work and living their lives. God, break through in those moments and help them to see you in the midst of that. I thank you that you long for that kind of relationship with us. In Jesus' name, amen. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know. I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org, where there are also some really good resources to help you in your spiritual growth. I pray that they are a blessing for you. 
I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.